business on the words of Sri Krishna. This spirit is demonic because demons do not believe in God but simply enjoy the property of the Supreme. Since there is a great need of an edition of the Gita in English as it is received by the Parampara Disciplic Succession System, an attempt is made herewith to fulfill this great want. Bhagavad Gita, accepted as it is, is a great boon to humanity, but if it is accepted as a treatise of philosophical speculations, it is simply a waste of time. Omagyana Timarandasya Kananjana Salakaya Chaksuran Militam Jena Tasme Sri Guravain Maha Namam Vishnu Bada Krishna Bistai Bhutale Simati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Jinamani So this verse is spoken by Krishna to Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra 5,000 years ago. You can go to that place, Kurukshetra in India, north of Delhi. This event is a historical event. Krishna is explaining here that the disciplic succession, we call it Guru Parampara, is broken. So what is Guru Parampara? What is this principle that is being referred to? The principle is very simple and it's very important. And uh, in the present day, it's hardly, un hardly understood. The principle can be explained something like this. That if there is a young boy, somehow or other, he doesn't know who his father is. And he's going to every man in the street. Are you my father? Are you my father? Are you my father? Are you my father? Yeah. And what will he think? You will think, this boy is wasting his time. His process, he's adopted the wrong process for finding out who his father is. So a kindly, intelligent person will pat him on the shoulder and say, My dear boy, don't you have a mother? Why don't you go to her? Ask her. If she knows, then she'll tell you. And she should know. That's your only chance. Yes, that sounds a good idea. I do have a mother. So he goes to his mother and he asks his mother, Who is my father? Oh, this is his picture. He went to the war. I don't know where he went. Maybe he went to, uh, maybe he went to uh, one of the many wars on this to fight. So you never saw him. But this is him. Or maybe he was dead. So immediately the boy receives perfect knowledge from his mother. This is the basic principle. Two kinds of knowledge. One, we heard about in the first play, inductive knowledge, scientific knowledge, based on speculation. We can never know the absolute truth by that method. Alternative method is to receive from those who have authority. If we simply reject the idea that there's a, an absolute authority, then we can be claimed to be bigoted. How do we know what is beyond our sense perception? We can only speculate as far as our senses go. Similarly, the boy can only ask, who is in the street, who is in, who, are you my father, are you my father? According to his limited speculation, he can only know. But if we want to know our own identity, we want to know the purpose of this universe, if we want to ask, answer big questions, ultimate questions, then we have to adopt a different process. And this is described here in this verse. This is called Parampara, disciplic succession. We must approach a spiritual master who is passing on this knowledge from the absolute authority. Just in a similar way, if we want to know about our um, rover car, how to mend our rover car, how to repair it, how to maintain it, we go to the rover factory and we get the handbook the rover dealer, and he tells us how to use this car. Similarly, in the human form of life, if we have an intelligence, we'll understand that there's no future in speculation. If there is an absolute truth, we should try and approach that through his representative, the spiritual master. 
Only in that way we can get knowledge in an efficient way. And we may be skeptical, we may have doubts, but at least we can test that knowledge which we receive. So this is the purpose of Bhagavad Gita. It wasn't meant just as a speculative treatise, so we can write an honest, honest degree thesis on, on Bhagavad Gita and Vedic culture. It is meant for a handbook for mankind. It is meant for the leaders, particularly the Kshatriyas, the rulers, the administrators of human society, so that they can know how people can be happy. We can see, practically speaking, that the rulers of this world are ruining this planet. Everybody knows there's an environmental crisis, and there's so many wars, there's so many diseases, there's so many problems, and nobody knows how to solve them. Simply we're speculating this way and that way, and things are not getting any better. We're making our planning commissions, we're making our experiments, making our theories, but where is the improvement? So therefore, Bhagavad Gita was spoken. 500 years ago, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we don't have a picture of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu either here, he appeared and he again set up a system for disseminating this Guru Parampara, this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, that is called the Sankirtan movement. This movement of uh, <coughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is authorized. It is not some new invention, this Hare Krishna movement. It's got its roots not only 5,000 years back, but even before 5,000 years ago. And recently, 500 years ago, at the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the disciplic succession was respoken to the descendants of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu coming down to the present day in uh, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, the spiritual master, founder Charya of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. So, we're humbly suggesting that everyone take advantage of this knowledge and uh, try and save humanity from the course of destruction. We don't expect you to believe blindly. We, people are too intelligent in England. We're, you're not so sentimental. You're trained in reason. You're trained in so many ways to think intelligently. So we propose that if you read this Bhagavad Gita, you study this Bhagavad Gita, you'll find the answers to your questions. Because they have been ultimately spoken by the Supreme Absolute Truth Himself, Krishna. And the knowledge of Krishna uh, is benefit for everyone. It's meant for the welfare of all living beings in all places and all times. So thank you very much. Uh, I didn't want to speak very long. I just hope some of you may be encouraged to purchase one of these Bhagavad Gita's and study it yourselves. And uh, this way the course of history can be changed. We, this Bhagavad Gita is in about 50, 60 languages now. We just, I just come from Russia. Uh, the influence of this Bhagavad Gita is very great. After the communist, uh, you can say, the demise of the communist regime, people are looking for a center which is better than the state. There's some truth in communism. There should be a common center to all our activities. But Bhagavad Gita is explaining the real center for our human society should be Krishna or God. In this way, we can have peace and harmony. This is the natural existing uh, system for all living entities to relate with one another is through Krishna. And this Bhagavad Gita kindly explains it to us. And I hope everyone can take advantage of this. So I don't have much time, but I think there's a, about eight minutes for questions. Guruji, yeah. uh, we talked of karma and uh, the play we just saw, it seems to inform that the hunter was advised to stop his karma and live by the river Ganga. That's one. Secondly, although I am a vegetarian myself, but I would like to ask that if we don't eat goats and all that stuff, they are going to eat up the human beings finally. If we don't eat what? Sorry, the meat. Question. If we don't eat the meat, the goats, 
the mm. sheep, the cow, mm. okay. they are going to eat up the human beings. So your question is? My question is first, that your place seemed to Thank be informing that the hunter was advised to give up karma and live by the river Ganga. How is he going to survive if he doesn't perform his karma? Mm. That's one. So the answer is that every living being has a particular duty. And by that arrangement, he can maintain himself. That's called Swakarma. Everyone has a particular function in human society. Just like the bees, the birds, the seagulls, they're all maintained by the Supreme Lord. They don't have to open big factories and make artificial arrangements. They can live very simply, simply by depending on God. Even they may not have very high intelligence. It seems like human beings, and they don't know how to live properly in relationship to God. So when we find out our natural activity, then we can live very simply, we can live, live very naturally. So that's what happened to Murgari the hunter. He was living an unnatural way. Later on he learned his natural propensity was to worship God like a, we say an intellectual or a spiritual, he became a spiritual, spiritually advanced person, a guru. He himself became a, like a guru. So that was his natural position. He actually, his natural position wasn't a hunter. But we're not saying everyone has to become a guru and, and receive donations. The Vedic culture says that just like a human society has a head, arms, belly and legs. And every one of us, just like a head, cooperates. So human society can also cooperate with one another. The intellectuals, the administrators, the business community, and the laborers, they can all fit in to uh, human society very nicely, provided Krishna is at the center. So there's no need to worry that he gave up his business as a hunter and became one in the renounced order. There's no need to worry about that. There's room for everyone in human society. Second question was? Second question was that if human beings stop eating flesh, the meat, cows and goats and things like that, then they are going to eat up finally the human beings because their number will be so large. No, 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 no. Why should that be? Actually, there's a perfect arrangement by Krishna that humans and animals and plants, they can live in harmony. Provided we know what is that arrangement, then we can control cows. Are, they can be bred in such a way that they don't overrun the earth. <laughs> but they can provide plenty of milk. A cow lives for 15 years, 14, 12, 13, 14, 15 years. She's going to die anyway. She's your mother, she's providing milk. She's giving milk freely. And why is she giving milk? So that she gets protected. Not only that, it's not necessary for us to eat meat. We're very healthy. We have no problems. We've got no hardening of the arteries. We've got no cholesterol problem. And we're functioning very nicely without eating meat. Not only that, the, we can grow fat. Far more grains and food grains on land, we get more protein per acre than if we grow meat on the same grass. So outside you'll find books about this, um, veget the, the value of prasadam, taking prasadam, vegetarian food offered to Krishna. Any questions? Three more minutes, please. Yeah. It is said that to every arrangement, Sorry? It was just said that to every arrangement there is an arranger, a creator. Yeah. Who is the final creator of God? Then it doesn't mean you, it means you don't understand the meaning of God. The, the Vedic definition of God is Janmari Yasayataha, from which everything, or from which or from whom everything emanates. The original cause or the cause of all causes. So to ask the question, what is the origin of God, that it doesn't make sense. 
How is that scientifically possible? Isn't it a case of insufficient knowledge where you don't know the relation between the who created the arrangement between the eyeball and the sun? So you say it's just God. It's just a case of insufficient knowledge. When you say you don't know something, you put it to God. Yeah, you could say that, but um, the disciplic succession, many great sandy persons, and the many scriptures of the world are giving us information about that original source, which is not illogical, it's very reasonable. They say that the source of everything must contain all the opulences which you perceive, you must have all wealth, all strength, all knowledge, all fame, all powers must be there in the original source. This is very logical. Can you, have you ever found anything which hasn't, doesn't have a cause? Huh? Have you ever seen anything? So the, the cause must be sufficient <coughs> to explain effects. So that is the science of God, to understand the original cause. And to understand it, we have to go through the proper process, which I've explained, which is called deductive knowledge, not inductive process. By the inductive process, you can never understand God, by the so-called uh, limited sense perception, speculations, and so on. Like a young boy trying to know his father. But if you adopt the deductive process, you make an experiment with this transcendental knowledge. For instance, the, the authorities on Vedic knowledge say, at first you must become purified a little bit, then you can understand God. So this Krishna conscious movement is like a laboratory. Please, you come to our laboratory. You try, make an experiment in our laboratory and see the result. You can take our prasad, you can dance and sing, you can chant Hare Krishna, you can read these books. And then, see if you don't expand your knowledge of the absolute truth of what is God. We invite everyone, please make this experiment. Don't be bigoted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. So now we're going to all take part in this process of Sankirtan, which is the uh, recommended process for God realization. It's, this is our laboratory. Now you're in our laboratory. <laughs> so let's uh, make the experiment together. This Maha Mantra is not, we don't have a Maha Mantra sheet here. But uh, we're going to try and chant it together. And uh, so please reserve all your doubts just for a few minutes. Let's make this experiment. Doubts are very intelligent, but when it comes to actually coming in the laboratory and making it and taking part in the experiment, then we should reserve one's doubts and take part in the experiment, right? So, the 16 words. Iti shodika sham nam nam kali kalma sanasanam nata parata rokaya sada vede shudishi say. The Vedic scriptures say that these 16 words, they can overcome all the bad faults of this present age. They're so powerful. So please repeat after me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Molari, Molari. Krishna, Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare, Hare. Hare, Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare Hare Quite good Is it possible to stand up in those seats? Is it possible to go in that room? Hare Krishna Hare Krishna It's better if you stand up We also have a dance It's called the Swami Step It's all part of Bhakti Yoga don't feel shy, stretch your legs a little bit. Left, right, like this. Come on in, see. We have a one, two, three beat. Which is in So this is a one, two, three, B.